so this is the second part of the lesson we started um, yesterday or whenever you happen to watch that video. Um, this is something called piecewise notation and it's kind of it's kind of weird. Um, it's a very small part of the course. You're probably going to see maybe one question on the test. M maybe, maybe not on the exam, but this is something that shows up later in math. Not even in grade 12, but more in uh, in calculus in university. Um, the idea of piecewise, piecewise just means um, let's write the the function in sort of different parts that describe the different behavior. Okay, like for example, if you just have a line, it's easy to describe that as y equals mx plus b. It has a constant slope, it has a y-intercept. Okay, but if you have an absolute value function, there's two different parts of this graph to describe what's happening here and what's happening here. Okay, so that's what piecewise notation is. Let me show you uh, how to do it. So it's used to describe a function that has different definitions for different subsets, so different parts of its domain. The absolute value of a number, so let's think about this. You're just going to write it exactly as you see it, where the graph is positive. In other words, where it was originally. Uh, that's not necessarily on this side, it could have been this side. And then you're going to write the opposite for it, describing the other part of it. Okay, now that might not make sense right now, so let's try this one. Okay, before I write it in piecewise, you should always graph. So it says write each in piecewise. I'm going to say graph first. Because graphing gives you some perspective on what's going on. So very quickly, let's do this graph. This graph has a y-intercept of 2, an x-intercept of negative 2. Okay, so that's that, that line. And then this would be the absolute value of it. This part is the same, and this part would move like that. Okay, so that's the graph. Now let's write it in piecewise notation. So instead of describing the graph as this, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to describe it in two parts, so I'm going to do it without the absolute value. Okay, the first part is this. Okay, now if you notice, that area is where this graph and this graph are the same. Okay, so I can just write y equals x plus 2. And if you notice that, that's this, where I just, instead of saying the absolute value of x, I just say what was in the absolute value, just the x. So here, what's in the absolute value, just x plus 2. Where does this happen? This happens where x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Okay, so here's negative 2. I'm saying everywhere to that side, to the right of negative 2, the graph of y equals x plus 2 and the graph of y equals the absolute value of x plus 2, these are the same. Okay, so that's what I've done. Now I want to describe this part of the graph, the part that flipped. Well, how did I get from here to there? Well, we call this a vertical flip, but what we're doing is we're saying let's take the opposite, opposite of x plus 2. Okay, so I just, whatever was inside the absolute value, so the absolute value is this, whatever this is, that's what I'm putting here. Okay, and I'm putting a negative in front of it. I'm saying I'm taking that x plus 2 and I'm flipping it. Where did that happen? That happened where x is less than negative 2. This is piecewise notation right here. Okay, I, instead of writing an absolute value, I've described described it in terms of its two parts. Okay, and its two parts are what happens on this side of negative 2 and what happens on this side of negative 2. Alright, let's try another one. So remember I told you the first step is to graph this, so this is going to have a y-intercept of negative 1 and a slope of 2. So this is going to be a half. Okay, so this is my graph. This is the point one one. Now if I want to take the absolute value of that, I go to the critical point and where it's positive it stays 
And where it's negative, it becomes positive. So how do I write piecewise notation? Well, here's the kind of the, the robot way of doing it. Take what's inside the absolute value. So here's what's the absolute value. Let's take this part and write it like that. Okay, where is this graph the same as this graph? Well, that's anywhere to the right of a half. Okay, that's this part right here. Then, take 2x minus 1 again, but this time put it in brackets and put a negative in front of it. So where did we flip it? Where did we change it from negative to positive? Where x is less than a half. Okay, notice these, this will always happen at the critical point. Okay, we will always put a negative on the part that's flipped, and the part that changed, didn't change, you'll leave the same. By the way, in your textbook, when you do that, you're going to see this as negative 2x plus 1. They're going to take that negative 2 and multiply, sorry, that negative and multiply it into there. You don't have to do that. You don't have to simplify. Okay, let's try one more. Or maybe there's two more. Is there two more? No, just one more. Okay, so what is this graph? Well, what's the vertex? vertex is. Now well, I can't just look at it, so I'm going to go negative b over 2a. So that would be 3 halves. Uh, negative b over 2a, I think it's negative 3 halves. Okay, and then I want to find out what the y value is. So I'm going to go y is negative, negative 3 halves squared minus 3 times negative 3 halves. So this is negative 9 fourths plus 9 halves. Let's change that to 18 fourths. Okay, 9 halves is 18 fourths. It's the same, so this is 9 fourths. So there is my vertex, negative 3 halves, 9 fourths. What are the x-intercepts? Okay, if I divide everything by z negative, I get this. If I factor out an x, I get x plus 3. And so my zeros are at 0 and negative 3. Hey, that looks symmetrical. This is good. Okay, so this is my original parabola. Let's take the absolute value of that. This part is the same. Here are my critical values. This is the absolute value. Now, it didn't ask us the graph. I think we were just supposed to find piecewise. So now that, that helps me find piecewise. So I'm going to say y equals what's in the absolute value? Negative x squared minus 3x. Okay, now this is tricky. Where did the graph not change? Where is the original parabola and the new shape the same right here between negative 3 and 0 it's where x is between negative 3 and 0 I want to say x is bigger than negative 3 but less than 0 okay now if you don't like that notation you could say this right that's the same thing Okay, uh, now where did it switch? Okay, now where did it flip? So I'm going to put a negative in front. And there is my function that was in the absolute value. So I'm taking this negative. You could distribute this. Don't have to. Okay, where did this happen? Well, it happened right here. Where is that? That's where x is less than negative 3. It also happened here. 
So I'm going to say or x is greater than 0. Now if you again don't like that, you could say x is from negative infinity to negative 3, 0 to infinity. This is the same thing. Okay, you could say x is from negative 3 to 0. That's the same thing. I don't care which one you use, but your textbook will use the, the inequality signs. Okay, so that's piecewise notation. There are only a couple of questions to do. Page 621, numbers 8 and 9. Uh, you can also try the multiple choice now. You should try this. It's not a big part of the course, but it would be good for you to kind of get a handle on it. Okay?